So today's topic is integrin proteins. So what is the integrin proteins? So basically these are transmembrane protein or we can say that it is a transmembrane receptor that facilitates cell extracellular matrix addition. So basically the important role of the integrin to attach to the another cell or the attachment of the one cell to the extracellular matrix. If you have a study about the cell, the two cells are connected to each other through the intracellular matrix. That means after one cell, then extracellular matrix, then another cell, extracellular matrix present. So between all the, among the all the cells, the extracellular matrix is present. So we can say that between the two cells, the extracellular matrix is present. Now the role of the extracellular matrix to adhere the cells or to fix the cell at the one position. So here, what is the role of integrin? So integrin is also attached with the cell addition protein or extracellular matrix. So integrin, the first function of the integrin to attach with the extracellular matrix and second, second function of the integrin to attach of one cell to the another cell. That means it gives the firm attachment to the cells. So the now question occur, what is the need of the attachment? If the integrin will not present, then what will be the happen? So we will study about this. Okay, if the integrin will absent, so in the absence of integrin, the cell will not survive or cell will death, cell death occur. <coughs> So, the basically role of the function, integrins are a protein that function mechanically by attaching the cell cytoskeleton to the extracellular matrix. So, integrin attaching the extracellular matrix to the cell because it is a transmembrane protein, so it comes outside and attached to the extracellular matrix. So, where these integrin is present in the cell, that point is called focal addition point or the reason is called focal addition. So as we have described that extracellular matrix attachment is attachment to the cell to the extracellular matrix is necessary for the survival and proliferation growth of growth of the cell and proper function of the cell. So, when the ligand bind to the integrin protein, so integrin protein is made of, is, or we can say that it has two type of function. One is a outside inside signaling or inside outside signaling because it is present in the membrane. So, it can carry out the signal from extracellular surface to the internal surface, internal uh, cytoplasm in the cell or it can carry the signal from the cytoplasm and give signal to the outside of the cell surface. So on the basis of this integrin, maybe we can say that functionally it, it is of two type. Either they can function inside to outside signaling or outside to the inside signaling. So if suppose if we are talking about the outside inside signaling, so what will happen outside of the integrin protein, the ligand will bind to the integrin protein and it change conformational changes or signal goes into the integrin protein and integrin protein take the signal into the inside. So upon ligand binding integrin activate signal transduction pathway that mediate a cellular signal such as regulation of the cell cycle. So signal transduction pathway we have already discussed like a second messenger system or a G protein coupled receptor. These all are the all are perform the signal transduction pathway. So signal to, to change signal in one form to the that is a transduction. Like suppose one hormones is by receptor. So the hormone is a uh, chemical and when it binds with the receptor and the receptor give the information to the internal cell 
that means mechanically it will activated and it gives some kind of signal while the releasing cytokines or another molecule it give to the signal to the inside cells so that is a energy is transforming in the one form to the energy another form either it's mechanical to the chemical form or chemical to the mechanical form or mechanical to the heat form that is a transduction form so here the again we discussed with the function like uh, one of the function is organization of the intercellular cytoskeleton so integral role is organize the cell cytoskeleton properly a moment of the new receptor to the cell membrane because cell receptor is not necessary that cell receptor will always fix it may be mobile or it can another receptor or through, through the linked linked receptor the signal goes from outside to inside or inside to the outside and the integral are found in the animals while integral like receptor found in the plant cell so this is the difference between the integrins present in annuals and plant cell that mean the function is same same function is present but always some structure may be different so that is why it is called integrin like receptor so in the plant is it, it, we can we can't say it is integrin we can say that it is an integrin like receptor but in the animal it is called integrin or human it is called integrin so now we have discussed the role of integrin one of the important function of the integrin to maintain the cytoskeleton firm attachment of the cells or hold the cells at the one position or attached to the cell to the extracellular matrix or attached to the one cell to the another cell this is the role but this is not the all in all function of the integrin one of the another role is integrin can cause the neuron regeneration but if you have remember in mean, the neurophysiology the neurons will not regenerate but it is not true always because we have the two type of system one is the central nervous system and another is the periphery nervous system so central nervous system is contain the brain and spinal cord while the periphery nervous system is all the neurons throughout the body apart from the spinal cord so the role of integrin is neuro neuro regeneration in the peripheral nervous system it is not seen in the central nervous system so you can see the figure so this is the neuron and the thread like structure which is present around the neurons these are the integrins so the integrin are present at the growth cone of the damaged peripheral nervous system neurons so the yellow color is represented by the integrins and uh, and this is a protein called green one is an active integrin and uh, this yellow color is the laminin fibronectin collagen so actually this is a ligand laminin or fibronectin yellow color this is ligand for the integrin so that means it will when this ligand will bind to the integrin then integrin will be active and then it cause the neuron regeneration so yellow color in here the ligand of the integrin that is a, uh, either may be fibronectin laminin called collagen like proteins and green color it is showing here the integrin protein and uh, some structure you can see here green and red structure so that is a active integrin so so if both are green structure that is a inactive integrin or one green and one red color that is showing the active integrin so when ligand is not attached to the integrin that it is we can say that it is an inactive integrin and when it is bind and then it activate then it is called activated integrin so the function of the integrin in the peripheral nervous system to regenerate the neurons so the, the neuron degeneration occur in the peripheral nervous system then we can say that it may be regenerate so now the question occur why integrin has not role in the central nervous system because if the neuron can be regenerated by the integrin protein so it may be possible in the central nervous system but uh, if you remember about the various diseases which are associated with the central nervous system uh, like uh, parkinson disease alzheimer disease 
so these this is are not easy to recover so that means neuron will be not regenerated that is why the disease is not uh, easily going to recover or regenerate the neurons so the reason is that there is two evidence which are showing that the neurons is not regenerated in the central nervous system so there are two obstacles that prevent the integral mediated regeneration in the central nervous system so one is that integrin are not localized in the axon of the most adult central nervous system neurons because as we have described the structure the integrin is around the axon of the central nervous system or cytone of the nervous system this is the cytone and this is the axon so these neurons are not attached to the cytone or axon of the neurons in the central nervous system because all the study are showing that integrins are attached to the peripheral nervous system axons so histological study or very immunological study immunohistochemical study are showing that there is no attachment of the integrin in the axon in the central nervous system so and second things integrin become inactivated by molecules in the scar tissue after injury so that means if any damage occur in the central nervous system so at that time integrin will inactivate so mostly what happen in the central nervous system disease the neurons are degenerated so when the neurons are degenerated in the central nervous system the integrin become inactive so it may not regenerate the neurons but we can't say 100% that it has not regeneration because various research is going on on the integrin on the neurons and uh, some scientists believe that it may be possible that neuron may be regenerate but there is not solid proof that can say that integrin has role in the central nervous system regeneration so up to the knowledge it is known fact that integrin has role in the neuron regeneration in the peripheral system not in the central nervous system now we discuss about the structure of the integrin proteins so what is the structure of the integrin protein so basically there is two important sub unit present in the integrin protein one is the alpha unit alpha sub unit and second is the beta sub units so two is the main sub units alpha and beta sub units and sometime these alpha beta units combine and form uh, homodimer or heterodimer so it's depend upon which type of neuron is present which type of integrin is present so according to the type of integrin or the position of the integrin where it is found these integrin may be of different type so one is the composition of the integrin and second it is a localization of the integrin that means integrin is not uh, present at one place it may be present on the neurons it may be present in the blood vessel it may be present in the another regions so according to the position of the integrin the structure may be different or the composition of the integrin may also vary that means the sub units will be change if different type of integrins so suppose here in the general structure i have shown here so alpha unit that may be 14 different alpha sub unit may present beta may be eight different beta units or alpha beta to dimer 20 types of alpha beta heterodimer has been seen so one of the type of this integrin is a sub family of beta 1 bla integrin so bla is a very late in very late activation integrin so one family one sub family of the b1 bla integrin so what is the common of all this b1 bla integrin the sub family we are telling about the sub family because uh, this is not only one integrin b1 bla this b1 b1 bla integrin may be of four or five types depend upon the how many alpha units or how many beta units so if the alpha beta unit will be different in the all the all the member of the b1 bla family so why we we are saying that it is a sub family of b1 bla because some structure will be similar so what is the similar structure so that is a seven alpha share common beta chain that means one beta chain 
and one seven alpha unit that will be common in all the members of the b1 vlfm and now different structure may be very so out of the seven alpha unit one is a type of a2 b1 and one is a a5 b1 that is b1 is a b1 is a common here and seven alpha unit may be of two subunit alpha 2 alpha 5 so alpha 2 b1 integral will bind a collagen and lamin that means these are ligand of this integral or if alpha 5 b1 integral that is bind with the fibrin actin so another family of the integral is called beta 2 sub family so b2 sub family consist of leukocyte receptors so that is common of all the sub families of integrins they consist of leukocyte receptors so what is a leukocyte that is a wbc so leukocyte receptor so that means these integrin will present in the blood vessels or in the blood so there are many types of beta 2 sub family of integrin like lfa1 integrin and mac1 integrin gp115 integrin gp95 integrins so these are example of b2 sub family so one of the important point of the we have discussed here lfa1 so this is called leukocyte interaction or leukocyte endothelial interaction <clears throat> that means this lfa1 interact with the wbc and it will interact with the endothelial membrane of the blood vessels so it can in interact with the wbc and it can interact with the blood vessel endothelial membrane or inside membrane so that is a present in the blood vessel so if it's present in blood vessel then definitely it will inter interact with the wbc and la layer of the blood vessels so next is a mac1 that is a monocyte and lymphocyte endothelial interaction so it is also present in the blood that means in the wbc and monocyte and lymphocyte is also type of wbc so that means it will also interact with this monocyte lymphocyte cells or endothelial membrane of the blood vessels so i have a question hmm so what is a uh, is a lfa one lfa a is a stand for lfa l for leukocyte a for maybe fibronectin or a for just wait a second to cause cell is dependent on apne jo diagram samjhaya tha wo bhi samajh mein aaya tha isliye main se confirm kar raha hu what is stand for lfa and mac m means to uh, monocyte a for stand for I don't know. One minute, we will do that. L F N. That is the integral. So name. If any proof form is present, then the proof will be given here. So, its full form is lymphocyte function associated antigen. Lymphocyte function associated antigen, okay. And Mac Mac one is it? So Mac. Uh... macrophage antigen so macrophage 1 antigen uh, macrophage 1 antigen so that is a leukocyte or f kya bataya tha sir function associated function associated okay. leukocyte function associated and or that is a macrophage 1 um, antigen so there are many type of the integrin present in the body uh, that may have different different name and uh, 
मे बी जी पी जी पी भी देख लेते हैं एक बार जी पी वन फिफ्टी नॉर्मली में भी ग्लाइको प्रोटीन एंटीजन जी पी वन फिफ्टी कैन चेक ऑल्सो इट I think GP is a 150 because uh, this macrophage have a glycoprotein linked receptor present, so it may be GP 150 or 95. Okay, so next one is a B B three subfamily. So that is a uh, one family subfamily B one, B L A, and second B two subfamily, and third one is a B three subfamily. So B three subfamily consists of uh, two protein here, platelets, glycoprotein, and fibrinogen receptor, and third one, uh, vitronectin receptor. <coughs> so these three receptor come inside the B three subfamily. So Vibronectin receptor multifunctional glycoprotein found in the circulatory tissue, amniotic fluid, urine. So it helps to the link cell addition, defense, and cell invasion. And because uh, that is a platelets glycoprotein, so its role in the platelet aggregation on the blood vessel when the injury occurs, and fibronectin receptor it will also help for the aggregation of the platelet. So we can say that these all B3 family. that is associated with the aggregate aggregation or uh, <coughs> platelet is it, it is associated with the platelets platelet addition platelet uh, blood clotting factors that means help in the blood clottings so this is the structure of the one of one common integrin like uh, this is the alpha unit and this is beta unit and it is present in the membrane and spring like structure here is a uh, disulfide bond we can show you another structure here uh, this will <coughs> one of the uh, integrins that is a fibronectin receptor so that means integrin bind with the fibronectin so you can say that it is a fibronectin type of integrin so there is two unit is present alpha unit and beta unit now alpha and beta unit composition may be different so how many alpha unit it is a 2 or 5 that is another thing point but uh, if the one alpha unit and one beta unit is there so what is the structure of this so this is the green one alpha unit and uh, blue one is a beta unit so if you see here in the function of the aap logo slide show ho rahi hai na hello yes sir okay so in in the functional activity the some ions are required for the binding of the alpha unit so these are shown the yellow color these are divalent ion like calcium and magnesium ion so for the functioning of this integrin unit the divalent ion is required so four ion is required for the alpha unit one while one ion is required for the beta unit <coughs> for example in this fibronectin structure but maybe this number of ion may be different the different different type of the integrin so here in the alpha unit it is shown here it has two component one component is the transmembrane protein that is embedded in the cell membrane and another one is present on the extracellular space so that is green uh, this fan like structure fan like structure that is uh, on the extracellular space so that both unit are bind with the disulfide bond as shown in shown in the figure here so while in the beta unit these uh, both unit will be connected to each other that means it's not a transmembrane or extracellular units are separated to each other both are already combined and these unit extracellular unit had cysteine rich like domain is present that means these domains has large number of the cysteine amino acids present that may form the disulfide bond 
and beta unit upper portion is just a bind of the one ion cationic ion and if you see here in the lower structure that is present in the cell membrane that will bind with the different type of the protein suppose if it is a uh, inside out signaling because as we have discussed that actin role is outside inside signaling or inside outside signaling so here you can see that the ligand is present in the inside that's telin protein and uh, alpha actin protein these are binding with the c terminal domain of the beta unit so that mean it it is a inside outside signaling integrin if it is if it is, it were uh, outside inside signaling then ligand bind on the upper portion that is a fan like structure and then signal will goes inside so here this protein will bind with the c terminal and the signal goes in on the upper surface or outside of the cell now these are the different type of the integrin which have different type of composition and they have uh, unique role and these are ligands which will bind with this integrin like alpha 51 that will bind with the fibronectin ligand and alpha 6b1 it is bind with the laminin and uh, that is a ig super family and that is a laminin so these are the distribution it is ubiquitous distribution that means in the various portion of the body it is present these upper, upper two and third one is present especially in the muscle cell and fourth is present in the wbc cells and fifth one is in the platelet and sixth one is the epithelial hemidesmosomes so in the cell membrane desmosome like structure present so in this structure that is present so these are different type of the integrin so in the different type of the body different type of the integrin is present so ubiquitous means one integrin is present in the lungs and same integrin may be present in the kidney so that is why it is called ubiquitous or another one is a specific that is present in the muscles so it will always present in the muscles it will not present in the kidney so these are <clears throat> example in which i have showed that outside inside signaling mechanism so this is the cell membrane and uh, this is integrin and this is the receptor present in the membrane and yellow one is extra cell matrix so red one is a signaling molecule so signaling molecule may be any hormones or any chemical that will come and bind to the membrane receptor so it is shown here this red one is when coming and bind with the uh, blue receptor so it is the it just going and activate that integrin protein so that means in the normal condition integrin is not activated in the normal condition integrin is inactivated when any ligand bind with the receptor then this receptor will activate the integrin protein so here integrin is activated and now when integrin is activated then it attached to the cell extra cell matrix to the integrin so this is showing that it's an activated integrin and then is extra cell matrix that is uh, some kind of protein collagen fibronectin like this proteins these will attach to the integrin protein and now when it is attached to the protein then it perform the different type of the function suppose its function to activate some cellular proteins so now when the it attached to the integrin protein then it will activate the inside protein so this is one of the mechanism outside inside signaling how the ligand will come and bind the, bind to the receptor and then it will activate the integrin now the questions uh, it may be confusing that uh, it is not like the signal transduction pathway that ligand directly bind to the receptor and this receptor transformational change occur and it will activate the internal receptor which is present in the cytosol but in the integrin it is not like this integrin mein ligand will not bind to the integrin ligand will bind to the first receptor and then receptor will activate the integrin and when integrin active then it will bind with the extracellular matrix and then it perform the any function so this is the mechanism of the integrin <coughs> so now you can see here so it is just showing that outside outside in signaling so in outside in signaling what happened that, that is the alpha and beta sub units and this is a fibronectin and this fibronectin is ligand that will bind with the alpha sub unit so when this fibronectin is bind with the alpha sub unit so what will happen occur these are 
both units are separated to each other. That is a 70 and a strong separation occur. So that means 70 a strong separation occur, then it will function. Or in the same here in the right side, it is showing that outside in signaling. So in the outside in signaling, the ligand is bind at the alpha unit here. So, so in the inside the ligand is bind and it will perform function on the outside. So that is the outside in, in signaling or we can say the inside out signaling. Uh, two type of signaling, but uh, here just uh, it has shown that fibrinactin is bind with the this uh, alpha subunit and uh, <clears throat> the separation occur. But actually, it's not occurs because we have explained that okay, maybe the function is different. The first uh, fibrinactin will attach to the receptor and then will uh, integrin is activated and then it will be separated and then functions. So different different hypotheses are given in the structure. So you can see also this uh, YouTube link in which uh, it has shown uh, about the integrins. So next, uh, this is uh, I have shown here one link about the role of integrin in the cancer or different disease. Just, I'm trying to activate this link. So now you can understand this role. If the integrin damage or different uh, problem occurs regarding the integrin, then may, it may be associated with the different type of the diseases. This time. In this diagram, it is showing that integrin protein the yellow portion is a cancerous cell and it is, it is integrated to the integrin. And it is showing that there is uh, some cancer tissue that goes into the blood vessels and they are traveling into the blood vessels and through the blood vessels it uh, traveling from one position to the another position and uh, in the another position it goes into the another, another blood cells. So maybe uh, in this way the tumor move from one position to the another position and, uh, and another position it goes and then it lifts up. So this that is a uh, metastasis. So in this diagram, it is showing that when the integrin has damage and it is not, uh, uh, or we can say that when the cancer occur, so in the cancer process, they, these integrin are more activated and they are more attaching to the cancerous cell and they help the spreading of the cancer. So this video is showing that okay, how the uh, metastasis or how the cancer is spreading throughout the body when the large number of integrin will be uh, increased inside the body.
Okay, so this is the uh, about the, about the integrin. What is the integrin? What is the structure of the integrin? What is the main function of the integrin? And what is the role of the neuro degen neuro regeneration process? And why it is not present in the central nervous system regeneration? And how this interact with the cells? And uh, it work outside to inside signaling or inside to the outside signaling? And different families of the integrin are present. And they have different composition. Okay, so I think uh, it is sufficient for today's class. So just uh, read about the integrins. I will send one of the articles regarding the integrin and uh, don't confuse about the naming of the different types of integrin because there are large number of integrins and there are many names of integrin are present so how much you can learn about naming of this so it may be uh, sometime confusing but main principle you have to 